What's up toes, Camera Hoarder 101 here, and I know it's been such a long time since I've done a video, and I've got a bunch of stuff here though, it can't, can't even fit on the screen. So let's jump right into it, and uh, just want to let you know that I do have a bunch of stuff uh, planned for the future, um, coming in, and still waiting for all that to ship, and this is one of the things that I recently got, and I'm excited to show with you guys, because it's a bunch of Interplay stuff, and as we all know, Interplay makes great stuff when it comes to the MLP CCG. Uh, so this is a 3 inch binder, and uh, if, if I have to say anything about this binder, because it's just a binder, it's a damn good binder. It's 3 inches, it's massive, it got the MLP logo on the side, uh, got the you know CCG logo on the front, and it actually it matches the play mat, and I'm sure they're going to be releasing a bunch of sleeves, uh, maybe deck boxes with this theme. Uh, obviously they're trying to like push forward this uh, th theme, and it's been around since the beginning. So, And then on the back you got the main six, each with a little screen cap and you know, separated and whatever. It's only, It only covers the bottom, so if you get towards the top there's nothing really there. So, And then all the whatever price tag, all that stuff. This is uh, $20 uh, right now on Enterplay site. Uh, which is just as much as the other binders, which I believe were each one inch or one and a half inches. So you're getting like twice the binder for the same price, which is good and all. Um, but that's only a sale price, $20. It actually, normally it says $25 on the website. And I don't know how long this sale price is going to last for. I mean, ever since it was up for pre-order, it's been this price. So I'm assuming it's going to be like this for a little longer. So if you still haven't picked it up, if you want to, uh, this is probably the best time to get it. Unless, you know, you're waiting for some big, like, 50% off, like, coupon code or something. Which, you know, they've done those two before. Um, and then also... Uh, for like coupon codes and just general interplay stuff, or I do recommend following them on Facebook because that is um that is the best place I think. Maybe that and then their Twitter. They also have a CCG Tumblr, uh, just all these different social media places where you can follow them to get information on the game and their products. So uh, another thing that you get with this um with this binder pack is one sleeve, like one nine or three by three nine card Ultra Pro sleeve. It's got uh, Ultra Pro all over the back side, and then um, it's side loading, so it's not from the top. You you put the cards in from the side, and then you also get this Rainbow Dash card, or I guess it's technically a rarity card, but it's got Rainbow Dash on it. And it is a promo. It's uh, P P F thirteen from the Canterlot Knights set, and uh, I don't know if you could see it very well. Uh, it's you know from the scene where Rainbow or Rarity is dressing up Rainbow Dash, and it's just called Rainbow Dash Dressing in Style. So I guess it is a Rainbow Dash card, but it's rarity labeled. So uh, it's standard card, you know, it gives a certain power to a, um, so if you have, um, so if you're at a problem with a, a Pegasus friend, or a, um, my bad, a Rainbow Dash friend, so blue colored friend, they get plus one power, and then if you're at a problem with Applejack, it gets plus one Applejack power, so orange. So it's pretty standard. Oh, and it becomes that color. So, whatever standard card. I don't know if I'm going to use it. It is a rarity card, and I like rarity decks. So, we'll we'll see if I end up using it. I don't really like to put promos in my decks, just because I don't know. It kind of seems a little, just for for my point of view, just a little unfair. But whatever. I, I don't play too much I, anyway. I haven't gotten a chance to play very much. Uh, this is a. Just a random booster pack that came in. Usually Enterplay does that. They put in a random pack of something, whether it be dog tags or booster packs, uh, with your purchase, just to say, you know, probably thank you. I'm assuming that's what they're going for with this. And, uh, so let, let's pop this open, see what we're getting. And if I could get it open, I hope it lands something good, because I haven't opened a booster in, in months, I think. So let's see. We got snips, or snails, my bad. Uh, Hungry, hungry house guest. Steamroller. Shooting star. Cheek beret. Manny roar. Twilight velvet. Goof off. Sun and the moon is a rare card. Nice. Uh, dark, dark dungeon. Rose luck. And social obligations. So, I mean, I wouldn't say it was anything great. I think I have a lot of these cards. I, I'll have to check. The Sun and the Moon one's pretty cool, I guess, since it's a rare card. I don't remember if I have it or not, but that's that. So, next, uh, we have this Rock and Rave pack, which 
is I believe just a small extension of the Canterlot Knight set. It only I believe has like 12 new cards so there's there's not too many things in here but you know the benefit here is that you're getting two different decks. This is a two player set so if you have a friend you could split it, each get one, you know get it for yourself uh, or just you know like I said if you have it for yourself you could specialize in two different strategies and you know one of the big sellers here is you know you got Mod, Mod Pie and uh, DJ Pond 3 so that's two new starters with two new strategies, and um, let's just jump into this. So um, this this deck is actually, or these two decks, I should say, are around twenty dollars. If if you got them from a store, you're probably gonna pay around twenty dollars on Enterplay site. They're like eighteen, but. You know, once you factor in shipping and all that, it'll end up being near 20. So now we have um, some new punch tokens, or action tokens, whatever you want to call them. A new rule book with uh, DJ Pun 3 and Mod Pie. And I'm sure there's a few updated rules in here uh, if they have changed over the course of these last few months. And then we have the, you know, the massive, like, poster-sized... Uh, playing field which you know I've opened in every single video that um, that you know I've opened one of these deck boxes they're, and they're usually always the same except they have uh, you know the different ponies and I don't know these are so hard to get open if I can just at least get to the part where there's a pony there I'll be happy all right there we go here's DJ Pond 3 on one side and then let's get the other side and then we got Mod Pie on the other side so one thing that I find incredibly strange is like why they decided to go with Mod Pie. I mean, she's a relatively new character, and I'm not sure if she's a fan favorite or not. She just seems okay in my opinion. She's by no means a bad character, but I was, I'm just wondering. There's so many other characters they could have done, and they have um, confirmed. Enterplay has said that they're going to be doing a Cadence starter set, a uh, Discord starter set, and I believe they said they're going to do a Derpy one. Uh, and I think a few other fan favorite ponies. I, I would like to see a uh, Lyra and Bonbon bon one if they're going like fan favorite. I, you know, it just makes so much sense that they would do a, um, you know, a two player set like this one, but with Lyra and Bonbon. Bon. And you know, I'm kind of surprised Octavia didn't get paired up with uh, Pon three, but you know, whatever. It's fine. I could get this open. I don't think I will. Okay, there we go. So. Mod Pie is classified as an Applejack card, which is also kind of strange. You know, you'd think she'd be Pinkie Pie, considering she's part of the family. Is her uh, start side, and her boosted side is a uh, holographic, like the other cards. And uh, the boosted side says, this card has plus one power for each card type in your discard pile. So I'm assuming by card type they mean events, uh, troublemakers, friends. So that's pretty sweet if you manage to get one of each and, you know, some some cards revolve around you discarding. So this can be a really good strategy for, um, you know, just a deck that revolves around discarding cards. If you have events that, you know, discard stuff, but you get other benefits, you know, you get the benefit for the event, you get the benefit for the discard. And, uh, you know, once your opponent thinks you're on top or he's on top, you know, you could come back and bite him with this card because you have so much discard going on. Let's see what it takes to flip it over. At the end of your main phase, if you have a friend and a resource, turn this card over. So, you know, that's not too bad either. It might take a few turns to gather up the points to, you know, summon those friends and resources, but I, I think this is a relatively easy card. If I'd have to scale it from, like, say, 1 to 5, I'd probably say this is around uh, 2 or 3 to flip over. I think uh, original rarity from the premiere set being a uh, number... Uh, number one to flip over in terms of easiness. Uh, so, th and then then it comes with rarity too from the Canterlot Knight set, which is pretty sweet. So, uh, this is I think uh, I I don't know if this is a new card. Actually, I think this is pretty new. I don't remember seeing this one, but anyway, let's read it off just in case. Uh, your opponent play pays plus one to play events. So that's pretty standard. It's pretty much a different version of the premier set rarity where your opponent would have to play or pay plus one for friends to, to move friends to a trouble or, or problem. 
So, and then the start side is when you confront this card's problem with at least two other uh, diamond characters or white characters or rarity characters, whatever you want to call them, turn this card over. So again, you'll have to get those, uh, you'll have to summon those guys and make sure that they're diamond characters, but I, I, honestly I think it's a little bit harder than the original rarity, but still. You got uh, more score cards, which, you know, they're colored to be in a theme with uh, this pack. And then let's just go through the cards. Uh, a lot of these are going to be doubles from the Premiere or from the uh, Canterlot Knights, so I don't think it really matters um, going through all of them. Actually, I, but I think this the, these ones might be new. So Apple Strudel, uh, Octavia, Qu Cloudy Quartz. This is actually uh, Canterlot Knights, and you could tell by the the little picture at the bottom here. Uh, Coco, Rose Luck, Rising Star, Noteworthy, Steamroller, Applejack, Cherry Jubilee, Vidya Swoon, Rock Solid Fashion. We got some mod cards in there. I got a golden ticket. Not on the list. Wardrobe Malfunction. Combat Hat, Vital Stand, or, yeah, but Vital Vidly Stand. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Apple Cider, Too Much Pie, Quarry Eels. Thing. Oh, they're a new troublemaker. Uh, opponents must pay plus one to move a character to this card's problem. It's a pretty standard one. He's pretty weak in terms of power and. A, a medium sized reward, so we'll see. Maybe this will help some people out, some decks. I mean, they give you three, so. A dragon? A red dragon, which is this is actually from Canterlot Knights, but I don't think I have this one, so. Uh, this must be one of the first times it's in, in a starter deck as opposed to being in boosters, so. At the start of your opponent's Troublemaker phase, they will pay two action tokens to turn this card face down, so. You know, you can get rid of it, but then it'll probably come back up the next turn. So you can keep postponing by paying two, or you can just jump in and assault the dragon. And that's six power with a two reward. So I think I think this one might be a little bit better than the quarry eels, but I guess it all just depends on strategy. So now we got some new troublemakers to this um, this set. We got Timber, uh, Trade Dispute, Oz from like my favorite episode. Uh, a, a stitch in time. Social obligations. Apple Bucking Day. And that's it. That's the Mod Pie set. So let's jump into the, the Pond 3 set because I think this is one that a lot of people are going to want to use because just because, um, you know, Digipond 3 is a fan favorite. And uh, I think a lot of people like, you know, Pinkie Pie sets. I, I don't see too many get used, but you know when I do see one getting used, I think the person's really like good with it, and they just they have a good grasp on how to use it because you know each each type and each deck and each starter has a different strategy to revolve around because you know the point of the game is to flip that starter and to get as much you know benefits from your cards as possible. So if DJ Pond Three has a good flip, then I'd say uh, she's going to be commonly used. So let's see what it is. On your start side, your home limit's three, as when you draw a third card during a turn, shuffle your deck and turn this card over. So that, I'd say, is pretty easy, because you flip a card to start, and then you could use your two action tokens, flip on the first turn, but then, you know, you miss out on doing anything that turn, but you do have a flipped pawn three, so let's see what she does. Exhaust this card to draw a card at the start of your score phase. If this card is with at least three of your friends you may you may ready this card okay so you can keep drawing I think I don't really get it but this I guess it's a free draw every turn and then if this is with uh, with three other friends then you can uh, ex unexhaust it I, I don't know I don't know man this is this is too complex so then we got a uh, Luna Starter, which um, is a Canterlot Knights card. Whatever, we'll just put that down for now. Uh, and we got the scorecard. 
Berry Punch. Wish I had a Colgate to companion this one, but unfortunately no. And there's actually, wow, three of them. It says, when this card enters play, you may draw a card. When you confront this card's problem, you may exhaust this card to draw a card. So, a lot of draw card drawing, all that. Uh, we got Twinkle Shine. Hondo Flanks. I guess that's Rarity's dad's name. This is actually from Canterlot Knights. Uh, Perfect Pace. Apple Brown Betty. Lady Justice. Good card. This doesn't require any uh, color to place, so it would be put in any deck. Uh, four Step. Same with this one. Swan Song. Purple Waters. Big Top. Professor Ney. It's elementary. Let's get this party started. Spike, take a letter. Downright dangerous. Funny glasses. Fighting for friendship. Chicken costume. Ooh, diamond dog. This is a pretty weak card, it looks like, from its points and power, but let's see what it does. When this card is defeated, gain two action tokens. See, I don't really like that because it requires it to get defeated, so you're giving the person a free point for two action tokens. I think in very rare instances that might be worth it, but I feel like the payoff is just not worth the risk of, you know, giving someone the free point. And giving them three free points, I think, is very not worth it, so... I don't think I'll be using Diamond Dogs anytime soon, but that's just me. Uh, Jet Set and Upper Crust, which they're actually from Canterlot Knights, so they're not new. Uh, Secret Mission, which Pinky's Witch, Goof Off, checking up on checking up a friend or cheering up a friend. My bad. Ancient Resource, and that's it. So that's all the cards that we're getting from this set. I don't know if we like got every new card from the Rock and Rave. I'm sure they're scattered through booster packs, and uh, I'm not positive if new like boosters just for this set are gonna come out. I, I doubt it because there's only 12 new cards, but they're probably gonna get like spliced in through uh, through the Canterlot Knights cards. If not, they're gonna be added into the next set as boosters. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happened with those extra 12 cards. So other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys later. Camera Horta 101, out.